Hey gang, just to let you know, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at FlipsideGaming.com and OriginalMagicArt.store. Using the code gets you 10% off orders $10 or more, and you get to help out the channel at the same time. Also, just so you know, all orders over $10 or more until January 28th, 2019 at 11.59pm will be entered to win their chance at a Ravnica Allegiance booster box. It's one entry per person, so good luck, and be sure to let me know what you open. Welcome ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to my 200th gameplay video. This is a pretty incredible milestone to hit, so thank you for everyone who's ever appeared in my video, shared a video, watched a video, or offered to be in the video. I wouldn't have done it without you, so thank you very much. Today's game finds us back in Montreal at the shop that started it all, Gamers Cafe. Original Fred is playing his Slimefoot deck, keeping Command Tower, two swamps, a forest, Woodland Cemetery, and Elves of the Deep Shadow. Jameson is playing Yuriko, keeping Isolated Watchtower, Watery Grave, Swamp, Sun Quan, Lord of Wu, Coalition Relic, Stranic Resonator, and a Blighted Agent. Matt is playing his Rune deck, keeping Progenitor Mimic, Stonehorn Dignitary, Reflecting Pool, Seaside Citadel, Forest, Island, and Slither Muse. Lastly, Jonathan is playing Kalia, keeping a Blood Crypt, Reliquary Tower, Plains, Mana Confluence, Aurelia the War Leader, and Imburial Rites. Matt wins the die roll and starts us off. Matt plays a tap Seaside Citadel, passing. Jonathan plays a Command Tower and passes. Fred plays a Forest and he drops his Elves of the Deep Shadow. Jameson plays a tap Watery Grave, passing. Matt plays a Reflecting Pool and he casts Wall of Omens, drawing as it enters. Jonathan plays a tap Blood Crypt and passes. Fred plays a Woodland Cemetery and out comes Slimefoot. Jameson plays an Isolated Watchtower and he casts a Blighted Agent promising to the table that it's his only infect creature. Right. Matt plays a tap Temple of Mystery, scrying one. Jonathan plays a Plains and casts Price of Glory, a card I flip and love. Fred plays a Command Tower, and moving to combat, he hits Jonathan for two commander damage. Fred then activates Slimefoot in his second main phase to make a Sapling token and passes. Jameson drops a Swamp and swings the Agent at Matt. At the end of the blocker's step, Jameson activates Yuriko's Commander Jitsu, bringing her in and putting the agent to his hand. Matt then takes one commander damage, which triggers Yuriko's ability. Jameson reveals the top card of his library, Counterspell, and he deals two damage to each opponent. Matt draws for turn, and he plays a forest. He casts a Stonehorn Dignitary, and has Jameson skip his next combat step. Jonathan plays a Reliquary Tower as his land for turn, and he pays four to cast Kali in his main phase, passing. Fred plays a Swamp and casts Putrefy to kill Kalia in his main phase. He then casts a Carrion Feeder and moving to combat, hits Jameson for 3. Jameson casts Arcane Adaptation in his main phase and has all of his creatures become ninjas. He then passes turn. Matt plays an Island for his turn and Rune comes in during his main phase. Jonathan plays a Mana Confluence and passes. Fred plays another Swamp for his turn and casts Pitiless Plunderer in his main phase. He then passes. Jameson casts a Coalition Relic in his main phase, and he moves to combat. He swings Yuriko at Jonathan, who takes the 1. Jameson reveals an Army of the Damned, and his opponents take 8. Jameson then puts a Charge Counter onto his Coalition Relic in his second main phase, and he passes. Matt plays a Gaia's Cradle as his land for turn, and tapping it and 3 more lands, casts Bane of Progress. It doesn't blow up much, but it still gains 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters from what it does blow up. Moving to combat, the Stonehorn Dignitary hits Jonathan for 1, and Rune hits Jameson for 4. Jonathan plays a tap Bajuka Bog, and exiles Jameson's graveyard. He then casts a War's Toll, because who needs friends, and passes. Fred taps all of his lands in his main phase, responding to the War's Toll triggers, and uses 5 mana to cast Sidisi, Undead Vizier. He sacrifices the Sapperling token as she comes in, exploiting it. Everyone takes 1 as a Sapperling dies from Slimefoot, and Fred gains 1 life. Fred also gains a treasure token from the Plunderer trigger. We then see Fred go and tutor for a card, and Fred then taps his elves and sacrifices the treasure to pay for Sylvan Library, and he passes turn. Jameson draws, and he casts Tetsuko Umizawa. Moving to combat, he swings Yuriko at Matt, who blinks her with Rune, and Jameson then passes. Matt taps all of his men in his main phase thanks to the War's Toll triggers, and he casts a Phyrexian Ingester. He targets Slimefoot and exiles Fred's commander. Using his two remaining mana, 
Matt activates Rune and blinks his Bane of Progress until the end of turn. He skips through his combat step and moves to his end step, and the Bane returns, blowing up War's Toll and Fred's library. Jonathan takes one from his Mana Confluence in his main phase to help pay for Demon Lord Belzenlock. He reveals the top card and repeats the process until he hits a card with a converted mana cost of 3 or less. This happens 3 more times, and Jonathan puts the cards to hand, then takes 4. He passes to Fred. Fred plays a Tainted Wood as his land for turn, and he casts a Regal Force. It enters, and Fred draws 2. Moving to combat, Sidisi swings at Matt. Matt blocks with a Wall of Omens, and with nothing else, Fred passes. Jameson activates Isolated Watchtower in his main phase, scrying one and bottoming the card. He reveals a Polluted Delta, which is sadly not a basic, and keeps the card on top of his library. Jameson then swings his two creatures at Fred. With Yuriko connecting, Jameson reveals the Polluted Delta, and dealing zero extra damage to his opponents. He gets to draw it at least, and he plays it in his second main phase, cracking it and taking one to go and find an island, and then passes. Matt casts Endicar Resurgence in his main phase, and he moves to combat. He swings the Ingester at Jameson for 3, and he passes turn. Jonathan plays a Mountain for his turn, and he casts Fervor in his main phase, passing to Fred. Fred plays a Force as his land drop, and he casts Eldritch Evolution, sacrificing the Force to the spell. Fred then goes and tutors for a Crater Hoof Behemoth, which hits the field and pumps all of his creatures by plus 5 plus 5. To make matters worse for the table, Fred then resolves an Eldrazi Monument, because huge creatures just aren't enough for EDH anymore. He swings everything at Matt, and the guys sadly forget that the monument gives everything flying. Unfortunately, this means Matt blocks the plunderer with his dignitary, and the carrion feeder with rune. Matt also flickers the crater hoof with rune, and then responding to his own trigger, soars the Sidisi. Responding to the spell on the stack, Fred sacrifices the two creatures to the carrion feeder, giving it two plus one plus one counters. The remaining creatures still have trample, and Matt takes the damage, dropping to 18. Jameson draws for turn, and we see a Stryonic Resonator in his main phase. He swings Yuriko and Tetsuko at Jonathan for two, and responding to his Yuriko trigger, Jameson activates the Stryonic Resonator to get a second copy of the ability. He reveals Mistblade Shinobi and Cyclonic Rift, dealing five to all of his opponents. Matt draws for turn, and hits Fred for eight with his creatures. In his second main phase, he casts a Bramble Sovereign, and draws from the Resurgence trigger, Matt then taps 6, paying 3 of it to cast a Knight of the Autumn, and he draws from the spell and responds to the Sovereign Trigger first, paying 2 to make a token copy of the Knight. He has the original copy of the Knight blow up the Monument, and the token copy blow up Fervor. Matt then casts a Birthing Pod, and with the remaining floating mana from his Cradle, he activates it and sacrifices the Bane of Progress. This lets him grab a 7 drop, and out comes Avenger of Zendikar. Matt gains 6 plant tokens, and then passes to Jonathan. Jonathan draws and takes one from his mana confluence. This is an irrelevant fact, as he casts a Resolute Archangel and his life total bounces back to 40. With nothing else, he passed to Fred. Fred plays a forest for his turn, and he sacrifices a treasure token to help pay for reanimate. He brings back Sidisi, taking five, and exploits the Elves of the Deep Shadow this time. He gains another treasure token and goes to tutor for a card. Fred then casts a Living Death, and with the spell in the stack, sacrifices his board to the Carrion Feeder. The guys then swap the creatures from their boards for the creatures in their yards, with Fred having a distinct advantage, almost as if he'd planned this. Matt has the Stonehorn make Fred skip his combat step, draws a card from the Wall of Omens, and blows up all the artifacts and enchantments. Fred resolves his Crater Hoof trigger first, pumping his board by plus 6 plus 6. He then resolves a Regal Force trigger, drawing 3. And he exploits the Elves of Deep Shadow once more, and goes to find a card. And with all those triggers then resolving, Fred then casts a Falcon Wrath Noble and passes to Jameson. Jameson draws for turn, but with access to only 4 mana, doesn't seem capable of doing much. He swings everything at poor defenseless Jonathan, and before moving to damage, activates Commander Ninjutsu, swapping the Invisible Stalker for Yuriko. Jonathan then takes 5 damage, and Jameson gets 3 Yuriko triggers because 3 ninjas dealt combat damage. He reveals Stolen Identity, Crackling Counterpart, and Spell Twine for a total of 13 damage to all of his opponents. This kills Matt and Fred, leaving only Jonathan and Jameson. Jonathan also has to discard two cards, Pitching Dragon Mage and Iona. Jonathan casts an Umbrella Rites in his main phase, and brings out Iona, which he discarded earlier. He names Black as she enters, and he passes turn. Jameson draws for turn, and looks at his lovely handful of blue cards. 
he swings all of his ninjas at Jonathan, and before blockers, casts a non-overloaded cyclonic rift to bounce Iona back to Jonathan's hand. He hits Jonathan for 5 again, which gives him 3 more Yuriko triggers. Jameson reveals 2 lands and blatant thievery, dealing another 7 to Jonathan, and he forces Jonathan to discard 2 cards from the Okiba Gang Shinobi. Jameson then plays an island for his turn, and he casts Cackling Counterparts to copy the Okiba Gang Shinobi and makes a token copy and passes. Jonathan then taps and flashes back on burial rites in his main phase. He brings back Resolute Archangel, resetting his life total, and he passes. Jameson transmutes a Demir Infiltrator and goes to find a 2-drop. He grabs and casts Scroll Rack, which seems good for a commander who cares about what's on top of his library. Moving to combat, Jameson swings all of his ninjas except for Yuriko at Jonathan. Jonathan blocks the original Okiba Shinobi with his Archangel, and Jameson activates his Scroll Rack. Moving to combat damage, Jameson deals 4 with his ninjas and gets 2 Yuriko triggers. Once more, he reveals Blatant Thievery and Ingarok's Wake off the top. This deals another 16 damage, for a grand total of 20 damage this turn. Jonas then also has to discard 2 cards from the Okiba Shinobi, and Jameson declines the Misblade trigger as he does not want to bounce the Resolute back to Jonathan's hand, only to have him recast it next turn. Jameson then plays a Command Tower in his second main phase, and he passes. Jonathan plays Aurelius Fury in his main phase, paying 4 into the X. He targets Jameson's token copy of the Okiba Shinobi, and then misplayed to try and kill them. It resolves, and Jonathan then drops a land tax, passing turn. Jameson casts Amanachu's Augury in his main phase, revealing a startling amount of lands off the top. He plays a Reliquary as his land choice from the spell, and he casts Inkeyes and has the Rite of Replication make a token copy of the Resolute Archangel, resetting his life total to 40. Jonathan goes to find 3 lands on his upkeep to his land tax trigger, as Jameson has more lands than he does now. He plays a Plains, and he casts Aurelia the Warleader in his main phase. Jameson casts Ingarok's Wake in his main phase, blowing up all of Jonathan's creatures. He then activates his Scorowak, putting aside some cards and drawing that many, then putting the ones set aside on top of his library. He swings everything at Jonathan for 10, and gets 2 Yurko triggers. He reveals Spell Twine and Blatant Thievery once more, dealing another 13 damage and taking Jonathan out of the game. Game review time. So, from the get-go, I really did not expect Jameson to win that one. He seems so far behind, and every time that he was getting a little bit ahead, someone kind of set him back. I guess this was offset by the fact that Yuriko's triggers can do a ton of damage to all of his opponents at once, but even still, I think he got very lucky. I think Jonathan's Kalia deck suffered a little bit because he wasn't really able to hit any of his draw engines outside of the Demon Lord, and there was never really a situation for him to be able to use Kalia properly, and as a result he had a lot of fatties in his hand that he couldn't really get rid of. Fred's Slimefoot deck also suffered, but that was mostly from Jonathan. Things like Price of Progress and War's Toll forced Fred to activate his abilities in his main phase as opposed to the end of other people's turns, which really kind of messed with his plans. He also seemed to be the only one who was able to find answers to help deal with Matt's board, and as a result, after dealing with Matt, he was all but spent. Speaking of Matt, I'm really glad that he's added some new cards into his rune deck, like Bramble Sovereign and Knight of Autumn. The Bramble Sovereign does a fantastic job in my Trestani deck, and I can only imagine it does even better in rune, with Matt being able to blink a creature for 2 colorless, and then pay 1 colorless and a green to make a token copy. And the Knight of Autumn is an equally fantastic addition, having 3 options as it comes in is very very strong, chances are he'll probably never use the plus 1 plus 1 counter one, but the life gain and the destroy artifact or enchantment one are more than enough to include this card. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at mtgmudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.